Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brad Supercoach Pro. Today we're doing around a 13 Supercoach team preview. Uh, just as my screen is loading. Um, didn't score too well this week, but that's okay. Look, you've got to have one down week, I think, in Supercoach over the buyers. Um, now, of course, when you start recording, it just, for some reason, doesn't want to have a bar of it. But in the end, we get there. So 17, 76. Um, it's not a... Yeah, bad, bad score in terms of the four-week block I'm predicting. Um, <laughs> not a great round rank, but I don't really let it get to me these days. Like, if you have a poor week, no point moping about it and, and cracking it and whatever. Um, we're, we're still, you know, positive vibes here. 8,610 for the season. Despite a poor week, we only lost 2,000 uh, spots. And I think it's because, like I said, the week before, we had like a 2,000 week last week. So I kind of predicted I had a 100 point buffer over the competition. So by having six primos out and being pretty round 13 by heavy players, um, I knew I'd have one good week, one bad week, and then two pretty solid weeks um, the following. So um, I think I'm just going to do the one upgrade this week. I've had a look on my side. And uh, yeah, we missed a couple games here in the round, but. We've got an overall pretty good knowledge of the side. Uh, I'm pretty confident from here on out the next, what, 10 weeks, 11 weeks, whatever we've got left, that the side will come home pretty strong. Going to finally upgrade my ruck line. Um, that's where I'm thinking at the moment. And I say like a mid-season draft, like player comes through, like Blight or potentially Saad from Essendon who kicked four goals on the weekend. Despite his ankle, if he gets up, I might look at going early on someone like that. But... At the moment, just while my screen is loading and I'm trying to buy some time here, I'm looking at Dowling this weekend from Adelaide. I didn't go early because I didn't want to sort of hurt my future upgrades. Now, unfortunately, sometimes you do study on these players and it didn't go down the way I wanted to. So I should have probably, in hindsight, I went green. Uh, instead of green, I was, sorry, I should start with, I should have went LDU. But I wanted the money for the week after. Now, the issue is I didn't take advantage of that money because, well, I didn't like the rookies involved. So about three minutes before the game, I decided to go Sanders. Didn't go the way I thought it would go. Um, probably doing this video a little bit backwards. But you got the 17 touches. The CBAs were there. Now, about three minutes before the game, he wasn't named on the bench. He was named like on field. And I thought, maybe Tog goes up. He scores these 90s for me. Could be a handy... F7 kind of guy, M9 kind of operator. Uh, but then, yeah, Brisbane midfielders got on top and my plan didn't work. And the other plan was Will Dawson baked, banked 227K and I probably could have done my last two upgrades with that money. But then you're looking at that and Wilson's a dead cash cow now. So he did a shoulder injury. So it was a sort of lose-lose situation this week unless you had him went early on a Kruger perhaps or a McMullen despite him being... Sub and the other route was Hutchison, but I don't know. Bloke's been averaging like nine disposals in the VFL, averaging like 60 super coach points. Didn't really appeal to me considering I need around 15 players as well. So it's it's lagging today, the internet. But the thought behind Sanders was like, maybe I can make some decent money. Now, I made 25k this week because he had a 98 the week before, but maybe he's in favor with Bevo again. Richards isn't back. You look at his scoring. Like it's it's been all right, 99, 98, 82, 77, 73. And this is, you know, time and ground's been pretty poor for it. 97, 83, 85, 98, 99. And these are decent scores for a guy that was 296K. I thought, why not take the punt? A few poor scores here, but generally because he was a sub or been subbed off, et cetera. So it was, it was worth the risk assess for me anyway because I've only got two upgrades to make. So now we'll go back to the way it should be. You go from the back line... Obviously, I didn't have Ryan playing, Young playing in my back line, Houston. So you're three primo short. You're not going to have a good week in that one line, respectively. Dacos, 64. He copped his shin. He had a player's knee. Uh, a bit of soft one here for me. The only spray I can probably give is like, now I know Muay Thai and whatever is so different to the footy, but you cop shin on knee and shin on shin sometimes in Muay Thai and you just get on with it and keep going. So... This soft as butter player. <laughs> and I get that, you know, Collingwood are up, but mate, it's just a it's a shin knock. You had the quarter time break, five, ten minutes, whatever you get. 
to freshen up, get back on the field, just play it out, mate. Like, Bytel is such a dud of a sub. Do you really need to give this bloke a run? Maybe take side bottom off. He's an older player. But, Nick, just, I don't know, even park forward. You just, to me, I think it's just, I don't know, it's just dumb. Like, it's it's not even a painful injury. I've done plenty of those and, and continue to train for 45 minutes an hour in Muay Thai. Maybe my shins are conditioned better than Dacos, potentially, but frustrating. 64, if you captain him because he's a soft player, it's annoying. Like, you got a run with role as well. Neil Bourne went with him. Um, so if you watch a pregame, he probably would have been turned off by that and went to see Gorn, hopefully. But to come off with that really annoyed me. But he's such a highly owned player. Um, that's probably my only negative about this week's Review and then yeah, one twenty nine for Shees. I was thinking about a VC, but kind of had a feeling I'd sort of prefer a VC option and not something like that I'd be enticed by to take. So thinking about him uh, all week and didn't go there. Then Fish brought him in this week, so he was a good trade in. He was a very good trade in. One twenty uh, came off in the last quarter, uh, copped a bit of a knock, and again like these players got a bit of a knock and they come off and don't want to. <sighs> I don't know. It's definitely not like the footies in, you know, the 80s, 90s, you know, even earlier than that, of course. They're just, there's, <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. They're not, they're not old school footy players. It's just, yeah, pretty weak, to be honest. But whatever fish, it was apparently just cramp, which is probably more understandable than a shin knock, to be honest. But cramp it up, take him off, and then he gets discarded. I don't know, 13, 14 points. People were annoyed by that. But the work was scored a 120 anyway with limited time in the last quarter. So, I, I'm not too fussed for that, considering I've got no one playing. Horse still injured. And then, yeah, look, I get young Houston Ryan back this week. So we should be flying after that. And then, look, Bond VC, three goals. Got tagged by Berry. Um, that's a frustrating one. But, look, I didn't want to go Flanders in, in my opinion because I thought he probably doesn't got the ceiling. And Luke Ryan went 122 against St. Kilda. So kind of thought it would be a similar sort of game. So I thought, you know what, chuck the uh, the Bont VC because there was no way I was going to take a 120 this week. It was either something really big or bust, and that's why I thought Bont or bust. Um, and then, yeah, still 98. bit annoying with Steel. He does this a lot. Still averaging 110, so it's whatever. 82 from Rao. Just uh, Gold Coast away from home aren't the same as what they are at home, so it's whatever at Marvel. Um not too much to talk about that one. And then Miller got tagged. Uh, the tag is definitely back this week. I think he'll be back for a while now. So 58 from Miller. It was a strange one to tag because if you're going to tag a play, it's probably more Noel Anderson that cops the tag. But before this week, I think Miller was right that 12th or 14th Frank midfielder as a pure midfielder averaging. So I can't really complain too much. Still averaging 107. And look, it's his first game under 87 this year. So... It's whatever. Dawson did the same the week before. And then Oliver, 97, probably played better without Petrarca there, um, maybe because they had to use him more in the CBA as not a high half forward when, you know, centre bounces were required. And uh, I think he got a fair ch- chuck of the CBAs and stoppages, etc. but just doesn't look like he's running to the contest as quick as he used to. Uh, so he's even a player I probably won't look at next year. Just not passing the eye test. And then Green, 79, probably played too cute. Probably had to play the LDU path, and that were the two guys I was keen on, is LDU Green. Gordon didn't really flag me as a, a long-term pick. I thought he'd have a good matchup this week, but long-term, I'm more a bit worried about wing time and what he scores from here on out. But, man, such a big difference when it's a 70-point gap. And, again, probably should have went against the crowd here. And just I thought Green could turn around this week, but I knew that he'd, his worst two opponents – were Hawthorne and Port Adelaide in his fixture, and they're, you know, respectively the next two games. Uh, so expecting a little bit of a struggle this week, and then after that, he should be all right. But maybe I should have waited a couple of weeks for his price to go down even further, potentially, and pick him up for 450. But I thought the value was here because he's already got his buy, he's a good pick. So one for two out of that, and actually one out of three because Sanders was a fail this week. But at least he made me 30k, whereas Will Dawson would have made nothing. Well, close to. And then close here. 
Yeah, Coase is annoying. I thought he'd score well because he's, you know, sort of that defender, halfback, flank, slash wing, running up and down a marvel for this this game might suit him. Scores a 48, so he's definitely got to go. And then Revel 70. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He doesn't get much in the ball, but he's been a good pick so far. And he's one of the rookies that kind of got right so far. So he's been all right. And then, yeah, again, you look at the midfield and <sighs> Butters and Strong missing is huge for me. Uh, and then, yeah, just dead bench as well. Rogers doesn't help there. And then Gorn, he was the captain fullback. Uh, I think he was early days, well, at least by Wednesday onwards over Dacos. Moyle 84 was really quiet first three quarters and had a really good last quarter, saved his score and saved his price from going up as well. So probably going to trade him anyway this week. Flanders 152, probably, yeah, should have went there, but it was the obvious one, but not so, because only 3% went there for a VC or C, whatever it was. And 116 to Heaney. I don't think I was ever a fan of Heaney against the Cats, regardless of what people were thinking. I was never persuaded to VC him. And then uh, Jacko missing in the forward lines. It does hurt. And then Kerno, 80, didn't set a game. But it's probably the game after his buys that I'm looking forward to. The, the run home looks good. Sanders, yeah, like I said, I thought the CBA role was there. I thought it was maybe a bit of a smoky to go there. And as I brought up his scores before, I thought he'd just be maybe one of those guys that with the right time on ground and the right role could average you 85 90 for 295K. I thought it might be a bit of a steal. And I just hated the rookies so much this week that nothing appealed to me. And he had a pretty low break even. So I just need him the next several games to get to 400K. And I might use him as a stepping stone or something like that. He's got Freo, then North, which might be all right for him. Uh, depends if he gets another spike score, he can sort of build it up. But he plays North again twice at least. So not the smartest trade by Bradley here. But this week, I think we're doing the two trades. And unless White is debuting or something like that, then I might be enticed by that. But we'll start. Um, for now, I think I'm looking... As simple as Moyle and Closey to Dowling and Cherry. And then that's probably it. Uh, I think we'll have like at least 18, 19 playing, maybe 18, but I'm not too fast. to so get a lot of primos back and a Cherry will play the rest of the year. And I'm just going to back my instinct and go Cherry over Grundy from here on out. Um, I need a pod, and I can't be playing non-pod now because if I play with the rest of the, the pack, I'm probably going to stay where I am roughly. So I've got to go somewhere opposite to the others and just take a punt on Cherry. Um, he doesn't got an easier fixture than Grundy, but I just I want him as a point of difference and maybe a VC match up here and there could be handy. The tackle game helps. I think the new rule will definitely help this bloke. So... If my screen will load, I can get into my trades a little bit quicker than this. But thank you for the uh, live stream views at the moment. Been doing a lot of live streams lately. Had John O'Carroll on tonight as well, so it was good fun. Should have probably made the invite a little bit earlier. Um, but it is what it is. And then, yeah, look, I don't know if there's a Thursday night game for this one. I think we're done Thursday night games potentially. From what I remember... Early days, VC and C. Couldn't even tell you. Haven't looked that far um, yet. I might do something smoky this week for VC, potentially. Maybe. I don't know what I'm really thinking early on. Uh, but this is what I wanted to do to complete my ruck line and stop mucking around in rucks for the rest of the season. I feel like it should have been just set and forget. There was no point doing all this ruck mucking around, I think. There was a lot of money in the meek. That this the meek, the sweet, and the moil play. Don't get me wrong, but a lot of headaches too, because you have to trade them out at the right time, and and get everything aligning at the same time is hard to do. But what I have been good at this year is trading out my rookies before they go down in price too much, like sort of trading them out before they lose cash. So Combin, we got rid of a week early. Had a break even of 48 last week and he got a 32 this week. So that was a win. Got rid of Sharp this week because he was on the buy and had some players to come through. And then who else? We traded Wilson this week. So he scored like a 25, I believe. 
uh, something like that. And then who else? We traded Reed, obviously, because he's suspended. Now, if my screen will load, I don't have to keep talking. We can just bring in Cherry and Dowling and then call it a night. Uh, definitely not Oscar or any of these guys. DeConning would be an interesting one. I'd love to pick him. But I just, if he already had his buy, I'd be very tempted. Um, but I think with Pat Pitnett, he only averages 70, and that sort of worries me if Pitnett came back. And then midfield, definitely not Ruck. You know what? Why would you have a ruck midfield? That'd be weird. You couldn't even switch them anyway. Midfield, uh, Adelaide, just sort by filter to make this as quick as I can. And then we'll have, what, seven trades left with one upgrade. So hopefully one up, one down, have five trades left and a complete ish side. I think you've probably fade Stuart though next week for uh, Stephen May. Um, I think I need another pod and he might be it. He's actually a good scorer, surprisingly. If you've followed my live streams and, and whatnot for a while, you'd understand him. Oh, I actually like the pig. Um, take out his injury game too. I'm, I'm pretty certain he's averaging more than Stewart. So this is what the side will look like going into it. Uh, a bit tired, rubbing the eye. Ready for a nap. Actually, ready for a sleep because I'm doing this at uh, 20 to... No. 40 to 12. 40? I don't even know that's the word. Anyway, that's for the uh, trades. Uh, now, I'll show buys. We might optimize this side. It is really lagging tonight. I think a lot of people playing their trades. Definitely not my internet. Um, VC and C. Who am I thinking early days? Hmm. 14. Optimize. Well, by optimizing your side, it gives you what they think is the best projected, but it's not always the case. Like, I don't even look at my projection. I'm pretty sure my projection was always 200 points clear of what I got, and it's, it's never correct for me at all. So, looking at the fixture, it, the tag's back, so I've got nothing in that St. Kilda and Lions game. Neil's probably going to get tagged. So I don't like anyone there. Maybe Marshall, if I had Marshall, would be a good choice. Cherry against Darcy Cameron. And then maybe Butters. That would be a bit of a pod one. Could go Fisher, but that's too pod-like. Don't got anything there. Hmm. I feel like Freo might have won this one at the start of the year. Adelaide and Sydney, nothing relevant there for me. And I generally do not know who I'm thinking this week. Um, I swear if Dacos gets rested this week, that's, that's going to really annoy me. Uh, Luke Ryan's actually a shout, surely, but not as a C. Come on, computer. All right, this is giving me... An absolute nightmare. So I think, long story short of it, I think I'm pretty safe of going with Ryan at Marvel and then captaining. Who do we want to captain this week, Brad? Um, this is actually a really hard one because I wish Dogs and Freya weren't playing in the same match. Freya. Can you trust Dacos not to be a laid out? Because if he was a laid out, that would really stuff it up. I'm actually kind of thinking Ryan into Luke Ryan into Cherry against Decam. Uh, I think that is my vibe with the night. I think that's where I'll land potentially. Maybe in some live streams coming up, potentially I'll have a gaze what's going on. What's he do at Marvel this year? Has he played too many games at Marvel? I don't feel like he has. Okay, this is not waiting for me. I don't got the patience tonight. It's almost midnight. So Marvel, okay, it has loaded. Almost cracked it then. 127 and 122. So it's probably a safe VC. Is, is Cherry, what's his scoring like against Collingwood? Mind you, you probably shared Ruck Duty, so it's probably a hard one to actually look at Cherry's history. 
Uh, maybe the venue might help me though. Looking at it, so he's playing at Marvel. What does he do at Marvel? 108, 90, 144, 133, 96. Interesting. Okay. What did he get against Collingwood or Ash? Okay. Yeah, that doesn't help me at all. <sighs> That's what I'm thinking early days. So look, I'll leave the video there. I've gone on too long, I feel, because of the lag of the internet. Uh, yeah, look, if you enjoyed the review, as per always, don't forget to give a like and sub if you're not already following. The sub will also notify when I am going live. So... Uh, I'll probably try to get more guests here and there too with the lives now that we're coming to the back end of the season Um, because there is some other opinions out there as well. And I'll leave the video there. Hopefully you guys scored well. Um, I will definitely catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.